Praise God. Praise God. Well, it's preaching time. And so with your Bibles in your hands, I want to read in your hearing two passages of Scripture. You're not going to know how they're going to connect, uh, but we're going to prayerfully try to connect them for you. Amen? The first passage of Scripture is found in 2 Timothy. Praise God. Verses 13 and 14. It says, Keep and follow the pattern of sound teaching, doctrine, which you have heard from me, in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard with greatest care and keep unchanged the treasure, that precious truth, which has been entrusted to you, that is, the good news about salvation through personal faith in Christ Jesus, through the help of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Again, keep and follow the pattern of sound teaching, doctrine, which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard with greatest care and keep unchanged the treasure, that precious truth, which has been entrusted to you, that is, the good news about salvation, through personal faith in Christ Jesus, through the help of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. And then in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16 from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Again, that's Hebrews chapter 4. Verses 14 through 16, it says, Inasmuch then as we believers have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith and cling tenaciously to our absolute trust in him as Savior. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations. But one who has been tempted, knowing exactly how it feels to be human, in every respect, as we are yet without committing any sin. Therefore, let us with privilege approach the throne of grace, that is, the throne of God's gracious favor, with confidence and without fear, so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find his amazing grace to help in time of need and appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to our God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Praise God. I want to talk to you from the subject, waste management slash trash removal. Okay. Waste management slash trash removal. Lord, thank you for this time of preaching. I pray now that this word will go forth with power and conviction. That the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And God, I pray the anointing that breaks yokes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My wife Deborah is going to help me preach this message. She doesn't know it. She hasn't seen this sermon. She doesn't even know where I'm about to go. All right. But Deborah and I ate at A plus crab and seafood restaurant. My wife loves to go to new places. And so we went there. It's located 
in the Country Fair Shopping Center just across from the old Canton Center Mall. 330-915-6989. Whenever I go to a restaurant, the first thing I look at when I go there is the trash cans on the outside of the restaurant. I want to make sure that they are taking care of business even before I get inside. Because if the trash cans are overflowing, it says something about what's going on on the inside. Not only that, but I like to go to the bathroom. And I like to check the bathroom out to make sure that it is clean and being maintained on a consistent basis. Because you see, if the bathroom is nasty, it may say something about those who are preparing my food. And so I want to make sure that there's a name that's been signed that's been cleaning this bathroom. And if both of those things pass the test, then I'll, I'm ready to go and, and eat. Praise God. And so Deborah ordered this Crab in a bag. She had crab legs. She had sausage. I mean, it was everything in that bag. I didn't know what was all in the bag, so I didn't want the bag. Praise God. And so I got some catfish and, uh, and, 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 and crab. What is it? Crab cakes. Something that I was familiar with. And we dined, and it was great. Amen. But then after we ate, and after I had paid the bill, and we had left, Deborah informs me that we need to go over to her place of business. Because there are containers that are filled with paper to overflowing. And she wanted me to go over there and pick those things up and put them in my car and let's take them and dump them because she didn't want the excess to be falling on the floor at her place of business. So we went to one area and it was already full. And so we had to go someplace else. And so we went to another place and they had several uh, bins. And all of the bins were marked. In other words, they didn't want you putting the wrong things in the wrong bins. Amen. And it was neat and orderly. And so we put the paper in the paper bins. Praise God. At our house, at our residence, every Wednesday morning, they pick up the trash and they get the recycling stuff every Wednesday morning All right. praise God it's called Kimball recycling and waste disposal and I'm thankful for them because can you imagine what your home would be like if you didn't have somebody consistently coming to pick up your trash let's say you went two weeks without the trash being picked up. What would your house smell like? What would your containers look like? It wouldn't be pretty. Amen? Amen. And so we are thankful for continued picking up of our trash and the picking up of our recycling material. Praise God. If trash is not picked up, you could have rodents. You could have roaches. And so all of us want our trash to be picked up. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
God is holy. God is righteous. But you and I are trashy. And, and, and tragically, in a lot of places today, you don't hear about sin. You don't hear about our shortcomings. People like to gravitate toward places that tell them how good they are. They like to be in places where uh, they have motivational speeches that encourage them to reach for all the gusto that they can. We serve such a holy and a righteous God until God cannot stand for you and I to be in a trashy condition. Are you all with me? Yes, sir. And so this morning in Sunday school, we were talking about ordinations of how Moses was instructed to ordain Aaron and his sons for the priesthood. Amen. God wanted Aaron to represent the people before him. Because the people, because of their trashy condition, could not come into the presence of a holy God. And so what God did was he made provisions so that you and I could come and have access to him. But you can't come just any kind of way. All right. The Old Testament, they had a tabernacle. God told them to erect it wherever they stopped. In the tabernacle was a holy place. And then you had the Holy of Holies. Now the holy place was separated by a curtain. Nobody could go beyond that veil but the high priest. Yes. Yes. Why couldn't they go beyond the veil? Because God is holy and God demands Holiness. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. The God we serve is a holy God. And he demands holiness from us. And so he told Moses to ordain Aaron. And then Aaron had to be purified. And he had to come a certain way. He had certain garb that he had to wear. There were stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel on his chest plate. So that when he went into the holy place, and when he went beyond the veil, hallelujah to the Lamb, he would be in the presence of a holy God. Yes, yes, sir. Now, when he went, and at least one time a year, it's called Yom Kippur, is the Day of Atonement. He would go in to the holiest of holies, and he would take blood from a goat. Now, they had two goats, right? They had one goat that they called the scapegoat. And what the high priest would do is he would lay his hands on that goat's head. And symbolically, it represented that God was transferring the sins of the people to that goat. And then they would shoo it out into the wilderness, representing God taking away the sins of the people far away from them. The second goat was 
killed. And the blood of that goat was then taken into the Holy of Holies. Good God Almighty. Now most people, say most people, could only go to the outer court. The priests could go into the holy place. But only the high priest could go in the holy of holies. When he went to the Holy of Holies, there was an Ark of the Covenant. It was a gold-laden box. It had seraphim on either side of angels that were gold. And what the high priest would do is he would take and pour blood between those angels on the mercy seat. God would look down from heaven and see the blood. And the blood would atone for the sins of the people. So that the people then would be forgiven of their sins because without the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. And so the high priest had to represent the people before a holy God. Are you all with me? He had a censer that he carried with him. And that smoke would keep him from being in direct sight of God. Because even the high priest was a sinner. Oh my goodness. And needed to be covered. Are you all still with me? In some doctrinal places, in some churches, they have people who will go into a little booth and they would carry their sins in that booth. On the other side of the booth was a priest and they believed that if they would tell him their sins and do a few Hail Marys that their sins would be cleansed and they could go out and do whatever they wanted to do. That's the Old Testament representation of what happened before the people and God. In the New Testament, Bulls, sheep, and turtle doves wouldn't work. And all of the sacrifices in the Old Testament were getting us ready for the supreme sacrifice, which was coming in the New Testament. Between, let me just say this, and many of you all who've been with me for a while know that the last word in the Old Testament is the word C-U-R-S-E, curse. That means with all of the history, with all of what God did in the Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi, the last word is the word curse. Look it up in your Bibles. There is 400 years between Malachi and Matthew, and God didn't have anything to say to the world in 400 years. Can you imagine not hearing from the Lord for 400 years? But then God breaks his silence. And when he breaks his silence, he gives us the cure for the curse. Amen. Amen. Because Christ is the cure for the curse. Christ is the man who has been appointed to take out the trash. Most folk don't like to clean the bathroom. Most folk don't like to take out trash. 
But Jesus was appointed and anointed to come down here to take out your trash and my trash. Because I don't care what anybody tells you, you still got some trashy ways about you. And I'm not talking about before you were saved. I'm talking about since you have believed. You still got some trashy ways. And every now and then, you'll even surprise yourself. You'll say things or you'll do things. You'll say, I didn't know that was in me. Because God's got to remind us that we haven't arrived. That yes, we're shooting toward perfection, but we're not perfect yet. Let me tell you what Jesus did. And I'm off my script because I believe I can take it from here. Jesus didn't just come to take out the trash. But Jesus became trash. For you and me. You say, well, how could that happen? I thought you told me that God was holy, that God is righteous, that God is. And Jesus is God. But Jesus was made flesh to come down here to become what we are so that we could have access to the throne room of God. You know, people are so flippant today. They think they can just tell God what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And don't even know that they haven't even entered into the presence of God. Because you got to clean up. Somebody say, we got to clean up. You know what? What's wrong with America? What's wrong with with every nation on the globe? They're trashy. And that's why nation building don't work, because nation building, if you're trashy, all you're doing is spreading the trash someplace else. I'm about to say something. A lot of churches are into church building. But if your church is trashy and you plan a church that's like your church, it's trashy too. Why is it that we have so many churches in America and America still looks like it's going down the tubes? Used to be a time when we said, in God we trust. We don't say that anymore. Why? Because we've gotten so used to living and being around trash that trash don't bother us. I do believe that there's a scripture that says, if my people were called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land and so because we couldn't get ourselves together turn to your neighbor and say neighbor you could not get yourself together We used to say in the 60s, man, get yourself together. We didn't know that he couldn't. If you could have got yourself together, you'd have already been together. People used to tell me, you know, when I get myself together, I'm coming to church. I say, I'll never see you. Because we had a sin condition. The Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have trash. 
that needs to be removed. So Jesus came down, and look at what God did. God put him so low until even the animals had to look down at him. God placed the bread of heaven in a feeding trough and allowed him to be born in the house of bread, Bethlehem. They didn't even have room to receive him. And Jesus tabernacled here for 33 long years. He lived a righteous life. He lived a holy life. There was nothing like sin in him. But Isaiah helps us here because Isaiah 53 says that he was wounded. For our transgressions. Uh -huh. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yeah. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. In other words, heaven's trash man came down here and lived life like you got to live it, yet without sin. But God heap your sins on him. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but if he just put my sins on Jesus, mm -hmm. that would have been a heavy load. Mm -hmm. Think about everybody's sins in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about your past ones. I'm talking about your present ones. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about your future ones. Mm -hmm. Were laid on Jesus. Yeah. The whole world. Sins were put on Jesus. And the weight of the world was on his shoulders. Yeah. Let me take you to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus, with all of the weight of sin on him, the Bible said he sweat drops as if they were blood. Many theologians believe that he had so much weight on him until the capillaries underneath his skin burst and he actually bled blood. Jesus fell under the weight and then he looked into the cup and he saw sin in that cup. He saw death in that cup and he cries out to God, if it be possible, Remove this cup from me. Why? Because I have not known sin. I, I'm not sinful, but yet I've got to represent sin before you because if I don't do it, they can't come to you. All right. All right. Think about if you couldn't go to heaven. Think about if you had to stay down here for the rest of your existence. With all of the sin that's in this world, with all of the hate and anger and animosity that's going on, we can't even agree on getting vaccinations. We can't agree on wearing masks. We can't agree on anything. Imagine if you had to stay down here for the rest of your existence. But Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And God heaped on him the sins of us all. Can you see him? As they scourged him, they beat him so bloody until he had no form, no commonness that we should behold him. Then they put a crown of thorns on his head. Why a crown of thorns? Was it just to mock him because he said he was the king of kings? Or was it because not only were we humiliated by sin, but even creation is groaning for redemption? 
And if you go back to Genesis chapter 3, when man messed up, God cursed the ground and said thorns and thistles will grow. And so now Jesus, who has become the trash collector, is wearing the curse on his head because not only has he come to redeem you, but he's come to redeem all of creation. They marched Jesus up a way called the Via Della Rosa. And when they got him up on Calvary's hill, they put nails in his hand. They pierced him in the side. They put riveting in his feet. They should have left that cross down. Because I heard Jesus say, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. And Jesus hung, he bled, and ultimately he died. Now, if you're still with me, I want to tell you how good Jesus is. Jesus was the sacrifice. He's the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. But he's so strong and mighty until he was also the high priest. Oh, y'all didn't get that. Jesus was the sacrifice. And in the Old Testament, the high priest took the sacrifice into the Holy of Holies. But Jesus is greater than Aaron. He's greater than all of the priests that have preceded him, that he was not only the the sacrifice, but he's also the high priest. And so what did Jesus do? He took himself not to the holy place, not to the holy of holies, but he took himself to the holiest of holies and poured his blood before God. And God looked at his blood and somebody said, there is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's vein, where sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stain. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day, and there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. And so he cleaned me up. Did he clean you up? Have you been redeemed? Have you been washed in the blood of the Lamb? Well, I got some good news for you. If you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, God has made you a kingdom of priests that you can come boldly to the throne room of God and make your petitions known unto him. You don't have to go to a priest. You don't have to go to a rabbi. You don't have to go to a preacher, but you can go to the throne room yourself. And get on your daddy's lap and tell daddy everything that's going on in your life. And because Jesus paid the price, even if you tell God things that are not totally true, he loves you so much until he looks beyond your faults and sees every one of your needs. Now, I'm almost finished. Some people believe that just because you've been born again that you don't need to be cleansed anymore. Some people think that it's just because you took out the major trash that you don't have any trash left. Can I tell you something? You still get it wrong sometimes. 
I don't care how much Bible you know. I don't care how close you think you walk to the Lord. Just like you got to put your garbage out every week, we got to put our garbage out every day and say to God, I'm sorry. And if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I don't need anything between me and God. That's why I've learned how to confess my sins. I've learned how to tell God I'm sorry. I've learned how to tell him, God, whatever you find in me, that's not like you. Take it out with the trash. Because I want to be available to you. I, I want you to use me in your service. I want your anointing to be so strong on me that I don't even have to say anything. But if I just show up, you will show out. That's what God requires today because maybe he's brought you to the kingdom for such a time as this. That in these dark days, God needs a shining light who understands that even though I got light, I still need to be cleansed. I still need to be refreshed. I still need to be renewed. But thanks be to God that Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it quite as snow. Philippians chapter 2 says that, that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and became a man a doulos, a servant, a trash collector, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Listen, I don't care what other name you've been calling. I don't care if you call sweet daddy grace a father divine a Harry Krishna, or a Muhammad, or any other name. There is no other name given unto heaven whereby we can be saved but the name of Jesus. And one of these days, one of these days, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things on earth, and of things under the earth, and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah! I'm thankful today that he's continually taking out my trash. I'm thankful that he loves me so much that I can come boldly to the throne room of grace and make my petitions known unto him. And God will give us the desires of our heart. Can I say one more thing to you? Yesterday evening when we were in the mall and they didn't start when they thought they were going to start, I felt a mist I felt that there was rain in the atmosphere. You know, rain and mics and electrical devices don't go together. But because God made me a priest, I commanded that the rains hold back. I didn't say I asked for it. I commanded it. Why? Because I'm a priest. And I ask God to change the atmosphere. And there was a, a buzz in that place and such an anointing 
in that place that we had church outside. Listen, don't wait till the bell is over. You can shout now. Because we know in the end, we win. Hallelujah! We're winners. We're overcomers. Praise God. Now, if you don't know Jesus, if you've never received Christ as your personal Savior, this is a good time. It's a good time to give God your trash. I'm speaking to you on the internet as well as the people in here. I don't care what you're into right now. You may have problems, difficulties, mountains that seem insurmountable. But God will take you right where you are. He'll take out your trash. He'll make of you something beautiful. And if you give him your life, it is no secret what God will do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same thing for you. So let us bow our heads. And as I pray, if you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is a good time. Lord, we've done as you have required. Your word has been preached. We know your word will never go out and come back void, but it will accomplish that for which it was sent. So somebody who has heard this word, who has believed the report, give them saving faith. Help them to reach out to you. And God, you said if they come to you, you will in no wise cast them out. So God, thank you for what your word is accomplishing even now. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. This is your time. The door of the church is open. You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come on your Christian experience. You can come by letter. You can come however you want to come. You just need to come. And so if you're here and you don't know Jesus, don't leave here without him. Praise God. Everybody standing. He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? There's nobody greater. Nobody greater. Your love is like any other. My heavenly Father, you live in me. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Your love. Heavenly Father.
somebody greater. Your love. My heavenly father. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Your love, unlike any other. Your love, unlike any other. My heavenly Father. My heavenly Father. You live in me. You live in me. Just one more time, he's all right. Israel does not hear, Jacob will not lose his reward. For we who preach know the terror of God and persuade men and women to come to Christ. God does not will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You need to come while it's coming time. Because one of these days is going to be all over. And you don't want to meet the Lord with your trash. Praise God. It's time for us to partake of communion. For those of you who are at home, uh, if you can get your crackers and get your juice. Those of you who are here in the house, if you need elements, if you just let them know, one of our greeters will make sure that you, you get your elements. Praise God. So what is... What is communion all about? It's about what I've been preaching to you. It's about a sacrifice that was made. It's about Jesus who, with his own body, bore your sins. And so the bread represents his body. Praise God. Let me get this thing out of here. Take eat. The, the wine represents his blood. The blood that was shed for you. Take drink. He's all right. I don't know what God gives us when we take communion, but whatever heaven's got, I want it. Amen. Whatever heaven's got, I want it. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Deborah, for helping me preach this sermon. See, you all don't know when I go home, I pay for everything, even when I don't ask her. To assist me, but she's all right. <laughs> we praise God for her. I still remember what you said, Doris. It's just 41 years late. Praise God. <laughs> oh my God. Is um is Kim here? Who's doing the announcements? All right, come on up, come on up. Praise God. Y'all say amen for Tomir. Bless you. Good morning, church. Come on, we can do better than that. Good morning, church. Um, it's now time to give. You can do that in a multitude of ways. Um, you can send a check to our post office box, which is P.O. Box 9094. Canton, Ohio, 44711. I believe also they're posting uh, the other ways that you can give via Cash App as well as online. If you're in the sanctuary here, we have two receptacles that you can also uh, place uh, your offerings in. And 
since I so happen to be the finance team leader here, I can uh, guarantee you, like Joe Namath said, uh, before they beat the Colts, every dollar will be used for the upbuilding of the Lord's kingdom. Okay? Um, also, we know that, as Pastor mentioned, it is game day. It's game day over at Tom Benson Stadium. I uh, just want to let the community know that, again, last night was electric. And if we continue as a community to make sure we're participating in these things when they come to town, those that make those decisions, because there were some decision makers there last night as well, like David Baker. And again, as the community continues to rally, hopefully these things will get bigger and better in our community as well. Uh, just yesterday uh, was the theme, there was a theme every day. So Thursday, uh, a lot of the Divine Nine were in schools uh, in Canton as well as Akron reading the third graders. So we call it that Education Day. Also on the campus of the Hall of Fame, uh, high school juniors and seniors from the community had a chance to go to a college fair. There were HBCUs there as well as other local colleges and universities. So Thursday was Education Day. Uh, Friday was kind of like the kickoff day. Uh, last night, of course, was community day. A lot of the Divine Nine were out uh, assisting in the community. Uh, uh, many of my chapter brothers, members of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Capita Chapter, we were at Mother Ball's house and we were helping her. So there was a lot of community cleanup uh, as well going on. But today is game day over at Tom Benson Stadium. Uh, also last night before uh, our main attraction was on, a Grambling State band was in the house, was over 100 members. We had young people from Enrichment and others on the stage last night as well. So, but to today, game day, the pageantry that is HBCU will be on full display. The Battle of the Bands at halftime, oh and goodness. then there's also going to be a fifth quarter where you'll get some more of both of those great bands. So again, enjoy it. If you haven't bought your ticket, my understanding is there should be more than 12,000, 11,000, 12,000 folks in the stadium. I still got folks saying, hey, I need tickets. Ralph Lee was like, how many tickets you need? So I'm gonna text them over here. I'm gonna find out. There've been people asking. So again, if you can purchase your tickets anywhere from 29 to whatever the, the other tickets are. So again, we want you to come out have a good time, celebrate, and then we just want to thank God for things like this coming to our community. Thank you. Amen, amen. amen. I wasn't as proud um, at any other time, I don't think, as I was last night to see all of our folk getting together. Wasn't no cussing. Wasn't no drinking, wasn't no shooting. And we had a great time and guess what? It would be great if that had been in the news. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because sometimes people always gravitate toward the negative. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They need to show the positive. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. Because there's enough trash to go around in every community. That's right. That's oh right. my goodness. See, when you come here, it's, it's like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Amen? Amen? But you will get truth. Praise God. Thank you, YouTube and Facebook, for joining us. We are ecstatic that you were with us today. Come back and be with us on next week when we will again go to God's word. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you is our prayer. God bless.